Hello everybody, what is going on? My name is Yvonne Armenta and I'm your host for all things Chats with Yvonne on Chats with Yvonne on Instagram. And also welcome to my YouTube channel because this will be on my YouTube channel live. And I like to think of my YouTube channel as a journal entry. So everything that I put on here, I get to look back on and relive every single time that I want. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a reaction video. Over on Chats with Yvonne, I focus on public speaking and humanizing the public speaking experience while also being really vulnerable with it and accepting that sometimes we're just not going to feel really great about it, but that we can get to a place where we are badass public speakers because I truly believe that public speaking is one of the ways to create incredible human beings. I believe it. I know. Bold statement. Today, I'm going to be reacting to my first ever big keynote speak er event <laughs> my first effort keynote speaking event i was a keynote speaker for pbl world in 2017 and the video is on youtube and you can find it there i believe it has yeah it has 379 views which i think is super cool i will also say like this lighting i know is making me look white AF, like my makeup and my neck do not match, but also look at, oh my god, I just got a crazy tan. Wow, that's so embarrassing. Um, okay, I might have to like reshoot this after I get my actual makeup, like new color, because I was working out in the sun a couple days. Oh my god, I can't get over that. I need to go tan the rest of myself. Anyway, um, this is kind of embarrassing. You know what, let's just go ahead and get started with this so it's not too long of a video. The keynote presentation is about 26 minutes long. I won't go through all of it, but I will be screen recording on my iPad and I'll pause as I have things to say. And mostly a lot of it will be a reaction. I know I'll be like, oh gosh. I'll try not to stop too much with, with my thoughts and interrupt too much, but I will also give my past self some, some feedback and I'll point to the ways that I think I've grown as a public speaker. So let's go ahead and get started. My name's Yvonne Armenta. Let me. Oh, no. uh... First of all, I'll start off by saying like that picture. Hmm. All right, let's start. I double majored in media studies and Native American studies as an education minor. Um, I found my passion in this, and a lot of times people ask me, "Well, what are you gonna do with that?" and Honestly, it's a skill set. I don't know what I'm going to do with Native American studies. I don't know that it leads to an actual career, but it's given me a skill set that I, I I just look at the world a little bit differently. Um, like Bob said, also, I am a first generation um, college graduate. And that to me, I, I say that really proudly just because I know that that is not unique to me, um, that there are a lot of students, actually a lot of my friends that are also first generation college students, um, but every day, um, I, I say it super proudly because every day we break one more barrier that is in front of us because our parents weren't able to guide us through this process, this crazy thing that we call college, right? Um, um and you can hear my voice shaking. I was nervous. I think this was around 2,000 people. I had done preparation, but not really because I remember that I was so worried about my nerves that I just couldn't even think about preparedness. And so I remember working on my um, note cards, which you see me look to here, which is totally fine to do, by the way. Now I probably wouldn't do that. Now I'm a little bit more of a seasoned public speaker, but um, having notes there with you is totally acceptable, especially when you're doing this for the first time in front of thousands of people. But preparation is, is really key, right? Even in my note, bar, note cards, I wish I would have taken pictures of those things. If you're doing presentations, just take pictures of everything. Now I take pictures of everything, but back then I, I really didn't. I wish I had those notebooks. I actually think I have some of the notebooks. If I find them, I'll insert like pictures here. But uh, even in my note cards, I only had bullet points and ideas. And there was a time where I also, if I was practicing something and I had a really good sentence, a really good thought come into my mind, I would immediately write it down because I knew that I wanted to say exactly that the way that it came out that one time. You can also notice my voice is shaking. I'm saying um a lot. And I want you to notice just how much the word um as a filler word 
actually dilutes what I'm trying to say because what I'm trying to say is that as a first generation college student, that is really important to my identity. Being from a single parent, low income household is an incredibly important part of my educational experience, but the filler words in there are kind of diluting my message a bit. Let's keep going. And we can't do it all alone, like I said. Um, I've had family, friends, mentors, teachers help me throughout this entire journey, and I would not be here if it weren't for them. Um, I can tell you that in high school, for example, I remember sitting late at night on campus writing my personal statement for college with my teacher sitting right next to me as I'm writing my personal statement. And that to me is dedication, and that dedication is what got me through college and, and here today. Um, so I do want to tell you a little bit about my um, high school journey. I titled this TBL, Creating Innovative, Passionate Barrier Breakers. And this is my life project, right? So we've been talking about projects in class and academics, and I'm titling this my life project. Um, like I said, this is a picture of me. Uh, I had a photographer take pictures of me around campus where I graduated. <laughs> Um, so I went to Metropolitan Arts and Tech High School, and like Bob said, it's now known as City Arts and Tech, um, part of Envision Schools. My first year, the reason I have this up here, is that my first year, my campus was in the basement of Philip Burton, a public... Okay, I'm going to skip through this a little bit because we don't really need this like background. But essentially what I'm there to do is to talk about project-based learning and why it's been really impactful in my life as a student and why I think that that curriculum will actually serve students better than having them take tests all the time. And if you're not sure what project-based learning is, I'll leave a link in the description so that you can check it out because it's tr it truly is innovation in education. I really believe that. And I, until this day, I stand by that because it's been the reason that I am able to talk to you in this way. And the reason that I find that public speaking is such an incredible tool for, for of, of communication. So I'm going to skip through some of this and just go to a couple of other people, things. To the students that stayed, right? What I will say though, before I keep going is I want you all to notice how I set the stage, right? Um, I think I did this really well here, especially with my audience. I knew the people that were in the audience and to you maybe it seems like, why is she talking about projects? Why is she saying my life project? But in this particular moment, my audience was a room full of educators, policymakers and education and teachers themselves. So it was important for me to trace back to my college, um, excuse me, to my educational career, which is why I pointed to the different schools that I went to. And I talk about, so the way that I decided to frame this presentation was in the same way that I had to do it when I was in high school. In high school, I had to give a claim, do a bold claim and say, this is why I'm ready to move on to the next phase of, of my educational career, to the next grade. These are the artifacts. Each of the artifacts were different pieces of evidence that supported my claim. And through each of those evidence, you know, through each of those artifacts, I had to prove and say, look, this piece of work shows why I've excelled in this area, critical thinking, note taking, whatever it was, and why I deserve to move forward. So that's how I framed this actual presentation, which looking back at it, it was pretty clever, Yvonne, pretty clever, past Yvonne. So a tip that I'll say here is really take the time to understand who is in your audience, what are they already familiar with, and how can you use that in your actual presentation to weave almost a story together for them in a way that makes sense to them. The difference in us, in our academics, in the ways that we talked about the things that we were learning. I remember one of my friends, um, she said, oh yeah, my mom um, doesn't want me to transfer, but I want to transfer really badly right? Only because we didn't find stability in our campus, but we always found stability in our teachers and our mentors. And we saw the passion that they had for teaching us. And that's what kept us there. In this building is where I completed my college success portfolio defense. This is a screenshot of one of the videos. This is me when I passed my defense. Um, <laughs> and I was very happy. I can tell you that finals in college definitely didn't make me feel this empowered ever. Um, I... So here, for those of you who are not familiar with it, so my entire four years. <laughs> so I made a little bit of a joke there and my audience got the reference and I guess I sort of expected them to laugh, but maybe not really. And you can see my hesitation there. I was like, wow, 
people actually laughed. <laughs> I lost my train of thought. So when you're doing presentations, also keep that in mind. Make sure that you know where you sort of expect, how you expect your audience to react because those things can kind of throw you off a little bit. You'll see I kind of looked up in the air and for anybody that, that knows me, I look up to the ceiling a lot in my regular speech and when I talk and that's actually one of the things that, you know, body language is super important and they can make you look like you're doubting yourself, like you're not necessarily sure what you're saying and it can dilute sort of this uh, connection that your audience has with you as the expert. So as much as you can, don't look up don't look like confused, look pensive, look like, hmm, look down if anything, or straight ahead. At um, Metropolitan Arts and Sets, every year we had two exhibitions where we, it was kind of like one first semester, second semester kind of thing, where we presented um, just projects that we had been um, doing throughout the semester and presented it to our family and friends. So it had to be good, right? If I'm presenting in front of my mom, I have to make sure that it's good. Otherwise, she's going to say, what are you doing? And every, every year we did this. And this was practice. And we did this all the time. And I can tell you that from my first year, I probably wouldn't even be able to do this right now. I am nervous, not going to lie. But I probably wouldn't even know what to say. Through these, it's... First of all, I think everybody can notice you're nervous, Yvonne, in this. <laughs> But but also, if you keep watching, I won't play too much more of it, but if you keep watching, you'll notice how I start to get comfortable. I even move around a little bit more strategically, but I move around a little bit more. I definitely always use my hands. It's just part of what I do. But, you know, I, I am talking a little bit fast, and I slow down my speech, you know? And that happens again. You just get a little bit comfortable. But I do want to point to something that I said, and it is practice. I will always point to practice as being sort of the number one way to get better at public speaking, really to get better at anything, right? But it's being really strategic about your practice. It's not necessarily honing in on, I have this one presentation that I have to practice for and only practicing that one all the time, right? It's about constantly putting yourself in positions where you have to speak up and where you have to practice saying something in a way that others can connect to it, right? And so what I talk about here in practice is one of the best ways to practice is putting yourself in the exact situation that you're going to be in. If you're about to feel uncomfortable in front of 2,000 people, you probably can't get an audience of 2,000 people just to practice, but put yourself in a room with maybe three other strangers, somebody that you don't know or somebody that makes you a little bit nervous because that will then I think train your your brain to say, okay, nervousness is part of the public speaking experience and it's not a negative thing. Being nervous actually means that I'm about to do a kick-ass job. Specifically at this presentation, I was there for an hour and a half um, both presenting and getting. Another thing that I keep doing is I had a teleprompter in front of me where I could see what slide I was on. I need to stop pointing to shit because my audience could see it up there. They didn't need me to be pointing at it, right? And so what I would have done a little bit differently then um, to how I would present now is likely I would probably move a little bit more around the stage because it, it wasn't that big of a stage, but it was big enough to where I could connect with the left side of my audience, the right side of my audience, and the middle, right? And I would look at my audience a little bit more. This comes with practice, and I definitely wasn't looking at them because I was nervous as hell, but another tip for you all. And damn, can I say my necklace? Like, that was definitely my mom's. I definitely borrowed that for my mama ask questions that were not easy, by the way. And I had to think on my feet and kind of, I, I knew that I knew what I knew, right? I knew that I knew what I knew. I knew that I knew what I knew. Motto, motto of public speaking. You know that you know what you know. And what you don't know, you go find out. And then you'll know it. That is the key to being confident in public speaking is you know exactly what you know. You know your experiences. You know what you've studied. Even if there's a little bit of doubt, do a quick Google search. Do some more reading. Figure out what it is that you actually want to be saying. But the key to confidence in your public speaking is knowing and acknowledging that you are the subject matter expert. The reason you are on that stage is because someone is asking you for your knowledge, for your experiences, and there's nobody that knows it as good as you do in the way that you do. 
So that's super important. I love that quote, Iman. I love that quote. And you see my, <laughs> I think that's one of my teachers or something from high school taking a picture of me. <laughs> Felt the love that day. Um, but I had to prove that I knew it. Um, and so this was monumental to me. And so I think that there's a problem because why aren't more students doing this, right? Um, the problem that I define it up here is that many students are not fully engaged with their education because they have no agency in what they learn or how they know or how they show that they have retained that knowledge and they don't see themselves reflected in their education. So when I and I made a bold statement there. And that's what you do with public speaking, at least in this sort of space. I made a claim. I said, hey, there's a problem. And then I go on to talk about different ways that I think we can solve that problem and why I think that through my education, the way that my curriculum was formatted, we can make this change. We can allow students to have agency in their education, be truly engaged with it, and develop incredible skills along the way. One of the stories that I always mention, and this is more just personal, not necessarily about public speaking, but my brother and I are two very different kinds of students. I've always been, you know, like, I just gotta get this done. I'm gonna get this done. I can take a test. I can memorize, blah, blah, blah. And I got good grades, right? On the other hand, my brother is, I mean, he's not a bad student, right? It's just, School is different for him, right? Or it was growing up at least. And through this specific curriculum, we actually were both able to find something that we're truly engaged with and care about and are happy to be doing as a lifelong kind of career or, or life, right? And that's what I think is truly important about being able to talk about the things that you love and being able to engage in public speaking. To me, public speaking is the route to engaging more deeply with yourself, engaging more deeply with your audience and with your purpose in life. And that is why it's so important for me to keep advocating and to keep mentoring people through their public speaking journeys and to also hearing from other people's journeys. I love I love this community that we're forming and I think I'll end it with that. If you want to watch the video, I'll leave it linked down in the description as well. If you don't already, go ahead and follow Chats with Yvonne on Instagram where we are rediscovering our confidence through public speaking. We are humanizing the public speaking experiences and nos estamos poniendo bien perras. So with that, remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.